So recently, Graphene OS released two updates, which I think are pretty important in terms of usability, privacy, and security. So I thought I would cover those in a video. Even if you don't currently use Graphene OS on your device, maybe these two new features are enough to convince you to try it out. If you are interested in learning more, I will leave a link down below to my Getting Started Mobile Privacy Guide. So the first feature I want to talk about is cross user profile notifications. So if you use separate user profiles on Graphene OS, then you might have noticed the lack of notifications between profiles. This can be a little annoying because if you're on your main owner profile and you have some messaging service such as WhatsApp or Signal set up on the other user profile, you needed to manually check in the past to see if there's any notifications or any new messages. With the recent update, that has all changed. So now with a simple toggle, you can enable cross user profile notifications and you'll get notified when something occurs on that other profile. So in this example, I'm currently on my burner profile, which is the secondary profile I use on my phone. So in order to set up those cross profile notifications, we're going to go into settings, go into system, multiple users. And on this screen now, you can see the new notification option down below, send notifications to current user. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable that. And it's important to note that only the user's name, the app's name, and the time received will be shown. So what this means is that there will be no private information shown in those notifications. So if you're getting a notification from a messaging app on your other profile, that message preview will not be shown on that main other profile. So now to see that in action, I'm going to send a message to my other signal instance on my other profile. We can see we have a notification up top, notification from signal, other users, notification from signal for burner. So again, like the explanation said, we get the app name, we get the timestamp, which is now, because it happened just now. And then we can see the username, which is burner. So I know for me and others, this was kind of a usability issue that came across when you needed to manually check that other profile for notifications. Now they're going to be automatically pushed to the current profile you're on, in my case, the owner profile. So now if something occurs on the other user profile, I will get notified of it instead of having to manually check it. One other thing to note about this setting is that for any profile you want to send it to another user profile, you need to enable that. So if we look at the settings on my owner profile, I have send notifications to current user disabled. I don't want my notifications from my owner profile going to my burner profile, so I'm going to leave that disabled. But any other profiles you do create, say you have a burner one, burner two, you could enable that notification setting on both of those profiles, and then that means all notifications from those other profiles will go to your main owner profile. So this is a great feature, definitely excited that this one has been released. So for this next feature, I'm going to be referencing the documentation on grapheneos.org directly, which I will link down below. I would suggest giving it a read when you have a chance. It has a complete breakdown and some additional points that I won't be covering in today's video. So the new feature is called Storage Scopes. So before we talk about Storage Scopes specifically, I first want to talk about what default storage access apps have when you install them when additional storage permissions are not allowed. So that sentence might sound a little bit confusing, so here's an example. So if you're like me, you might have wondered why when you went to download a file in your browser on your mobile device, you were able to download the file without issue and your browser never prompted for any additional storage permissions. So the reason why that worked is that apps are given a certain set of default permissions when they are installed. So specifically when you install an app, this is what it's allowed to do. So without any storage permissions, an app is allowed to create media files in standard directories, music, ringtones, pictures, DCIM, videos, create files of any type, both media and non-media and documents and download. This is why you were able to download a file in your browser without granting any additional permissions, create new directories inside standard directories, rename, delete files that were created by the app itself, this is a very important thing to remember. I'm going to be touching on that a little bit more later when we talk about storage scopes. Rename and delete directories if it can rename and delete all files within those directories. So when you install an app and you don't allow any additional storage access permissions, this is exactly what that app can do. So these permissions allow an app to store specific files in specific locations while at the same time having zero access to any files the app did not create itself. So this makes for an extremely robust security model given the fact that any app you install cannot read any other files on your device unless you specifically give permission to the app to do that, which helps keep your data private. So we covered what access apps have by default when they aren't given any additional storage permission. Now let's talk about what happens when you select allow on a pop-up like this and how storage scopes can help. So I'm using Signal for this example, and we can see here allow Signal to access photos and media on your device. 
This corresponds to the allow access to media only. And now what happens when we click allow on this prompt allows the app to read media files that were created by other apps. Non-media files remain invisible to it. So now to demonstrate those permissions, I'm going to take a photo with the Signal app. I'm going to send it to myself. And then going to save it to my device. Yes. So this photo of my desk that I just took, this photo was created by the Signal app since we took the photo inside of the Signal app. The next photo we're going to take, I'm just going to take a picture of the keyboard. So if we go to gallery, we should now have two photos in here. The first one, photo of the keyboard that was taken with the camera app on my device. And the second photo we can see down here that I saved to my phone. That one was taken by Signal and saved to my device. So as far as permissions go, first one created by the camera app, second one that was created and belongs to the Signal app. So now if we go back inside the Signal app and we click to share a photo, based on the permissions that we gave it to allow access to media only, we can see the photo taken by my camera app on my device, and we can see the photo of my desk, which makes sense because it allows the app to read media files that were created by other apps, in this case, the camera app. So now to demonstrate what storage scopes allow you to restrict. So I just want to say that I wouldn't suggest making this permission change for Signal. This is just the easiest way I found to demonstrate storage scopes. So if I go into Permission Manager, Files and Media, we can see down here, allowed to access media only, signal, it's listed there. I'm going to click on that, I'm going to change it to don't allow, and then configure storage scopes. So before we enable this, we're just going to read a little disclaimer down below. When enabled, this app will assume that it has the storage access permission, despite not actually having it. The app will only see files that were created by it, and then optionally, you can specify which additional files and folders it can see. So right now, after enabling that, Signal now thinks we have that media access permission that we saw it prompt for earlier. We also have the option to add specific folders and files, but I'm not going to do that right now. So now to demonstrate that that's working, if we go back into the Signal app, back on my note to self, tap the share button, and now inside the photos, the only photo we can see is the photo we took inside the Signal app. Storage scopes now restricted Signal to only allow it to see media files that it created. That's why we no longer see the photo that I took with the camera app. So now you might be asking yourself, well, if I don't want to do this for Signal, then what's the big deal with storage scopes? So let's talk about another app that I think is a little overly aggressive in its permission access that it requests, and that is Aurora Store. So if we go take a look at Aurora Store, go look at Permissions, File and Media. So by default, when you install Aurora Store, it asks for allow management of all files. And we can see the little disclaimer down below here. If you allow management of all files, this app can access, modify, delete any files in common storage on this device or connected storage devices. The app may access files without asking you. I don't know about you, but for me, that's a lot of permissions that an app that's just meant to install other apps is asking for. And so the thing with Aurora Store is that it asks for this access by default when you install the app. There's no way around it. If you click grant and then select don't allow, you gotta try again, don't allow it. It won't let you install the app without these permissions being allowed. So now this is where storage scopes come in. So instead of clicking allow or don't allow, on the initial setup, you can click configure storage scopes, enable storage scopes. And so now Aurora Store can only see files that were created by it, but it thinks that it was granted all the permissions that it needs. So if we go back, we can see the external storage access, external storage manager, both show granted, even though in all reality, these were not actually granted to it. Just gonna grant that one quick too. And then we can log into the app as normal. So I've been testing throughout the week Aurora Store with this restricted permission and everything worked as expected. I was able to install apps, update apps, yet Aurora Store doesn't have all that access that it really didn't need. So storage scopes help give you that granular control to make sure that whatever apps you're installing don't have more access than they actually need to function. There is one limitation highlighted in the documentation, which says the most significant limitation of storage scopes is the fact that the app will lose access to files that it created if it's uninstalled and then installed again. So let's say you have a note-taking app, you enabled storage scopes, you created a new note and saved it on a device. If you then uninstall that note-taking app and then reinstall it, you won't have access to that note anymore because it was created by that other installation of your note-taking app. That's where the add folder and add file options come into play. You can then add the folder where your notes were initially created by the other installation instance, and then that new install would have access. 
So two other things I want to mention about the storage scope feature. If you want to disable it, say you were playing around with it in your signal app and you're like, oh, let me disable that now or turn it off. You click the three vertical dots in the upper right hand corner, select turn off. Storage scopes are now disabled and you can change permissions however you want. The other thing I want to note is that so you saw with Aurora Store, when I did that initial setup, you can configure storage scopes on the initial installation of an app. You can also configure storage scopes after you install an app, so don't think you need to reinstall the app to configure storage scopes. In the case of Aurora Store, we're just going to go into the permissions, which you can access through the settings app, or you can just long press on the app you want to see permissions for, select app info, select permissions, files and media. And so in here we can see it currently has allow management of all files. We're going to select don't allow, configure storage scopes, enable storage scopes, and that's it. So while I was editing, I came across another scenario where I think scoped storage can be pretty beneficial. So if you ever used iOS and had an app request access to your photos, there's a couple options you're presented with when that occurs. So let's say you have Facebook installed on your iOS device and you don't want to give Facebook access to all your photos. You can use the select photos feature to select individual photos that the Facebook app will have access to. And on Graphene OS, we can use the scoped storage feature to accomplish something similar. So if we go to gallery, we can see the two photos we took earlier in the example. And we can also see the sensitive photo on the bottom, which is a picture of an eggplant. We want to make sure we restrict access to that photo. So as an example, we're going to jump into the messaging app going to start a quick chat with Tom Test. And if we go to the attachments option, we can see here that all of our photos are available to share, including the sensitive photo that we don't want to share in the messaging app because that uses SMS. And we don't want to share our sensitive eggplant photos in anything but a secure messaging app such as Signal. So using scoped storage, we can go into the permissions for the messaging app, permissions, file and media, Currently, the messaging app has access to allow management of all files. I'm going to select don't allow. Just a quick warning, I'm doing this for an example, so I'm going to click don't allow anyway. Configure scoped storage, enable. And now the first thing I want to do is add the folder where my photos are. So the first folder I want to add is the pictures folder. So inside here is the photo that I took with Signal earlier, along with screenshots. That one's okay to share. Allow messaging to access files and pictures, allow. And then the second folder I want to add, that's going to be in DCIM. So in here we have the pics folder where I have my sensitive photos. And in the second folder here, the camera folder, we have the photos that were taken with the camera app on the device. So I also want to share this folder. Allow messaging to access files and camera, allow. And now at this point, I've added all the folders containing images that I'm okay sharing in the messaging app. So now if we go back to the messaging app, and then we click the attachments option, so we can now see that the messaging app only has access to see the photos that we specifically allowed it to see in the folders that we selected. So scope storage is a great way to give you granular control over what files different apps have access to, and also help you keep your private photos private. So there is one more option for sharing files that I want to point out that's separate from storage scopes. So due to the way that permissions work on Android, if a user manually picks a file and chooses to share that with an application, regardless of permissions, that photo or whatever it is will be available to that application that you're, you chose to share it with. So to demonstrate this, again, let's go into messaging. We can see here the only photos available are the keyboard and the desk photo. So if we go into gallery and select our private photo, and then we select the messaging app, new message. We're gonna select Tom Test again. So we can now see that we can send the photo if we want or whatever file we selected that the app initially did not have access to. And the great thing about manually sharing something like this is that it just happens one time. There's no permissions to add. There's no permissions to remove. The only time the app had access to that file was when you chose to share it. So one question that came up regarding storage scopes was, does this replace the need for user profiles? And of course, it's the answer everyone hates. It depends. So let me give a couple examples. So in the past, you might have an overly ambitious app such as Aurora Store want access to all your files and data. If you had that installed on your main owner profile, you would have had the risk of the app reading some of your sensitive data, which is not ideal. Therefore, you may have installed it on a separate user profile, so it only had access to the data on that separate user profile. 
So now with storage scopes, you can restrict any overly ambitious apps to only have access to data that they created, preserving your privacy and your main owner profile if you're concerned with them having unrestricted access to all of your data. So in that specific scenario, I would say that storage scopes could replace the need for a separate user profile. But now in the second example, I don't think storage scopes would help. So for me, I only have Sandbox Play services installed on my second user profile or my burner profile. I don't have them installed on my main owner profile. I don't want all apps on my main owner profile to have access to those Sandbox Play services. So this is where that second user profile comes in. I only have apps installed on that profile that I want to have access to Google Play services specifically or apps that explicitly require it. User profiles also have the feature of the end session option, which means that anything running on that second user profile, the second I click end session is terminated. That option does not exist on your main owner profile because you need to be logged into your phone to use it. So this is another option that a second user profile allows for that storage scopes can't help with. So it depends on what you were looking to accomplish with that second user profile. If it was to restrict an app from having access to your personal data on that main owner profile, storage scopes can help. If it was to restrict which apps have access to Google Play services, then storage scopes can't help with that. If you're looking for a completely separate, isolated workspace from your main owner profile, storage scopes won't help with that. That's where a user profile will help. So again, the answer is it depends on what you're looking for. And then lastly, keep in mind that this feature was only released a couple weeks ago, so there might be some changes to it in the future. The interface also might look a little bit different depending on when you're watching this video, but the underlying storage access concept should still apply. And again, I'll link down below to the official documentation. Take a few minutes to read it. It's actually pretty interesting.